start that now. Uh, but stop me at any time uh, as we go through today's presentation. Ask questions, uh, and you know certainly I would encourage you to uh, go out and uh, uh, take a look at the Community Vitality website and, and the information that's available out there. And I'm part of that entire website. I've got my own, so hopefully that will give you some information. So let's begin. I hope to take about half an hour of time and then just have questions. But like I said, ask any time. Once upon a time, you always have to tell a story. That's the way they say. Uh, you hear a lot about engaging audiences, so we're going to begin with once upon a time, small businesses ruled the world. Uh, as you think about small businesses, that's all there used to be. All businesses uh, at one time were probably home-based. We didn't have stores if we go back far enough. And they certainly were small. Uh, we did not have large businesses in the sense of what we have today, some of these uh, huge conglomerates we have. So we always talk about small businesses rule the world. And truth be known, uh, it's still true here in North Dakota and actually across our entire country and across the world. Uh, it's a small business that makes up the majority of businesses, as you see the North Dakota story. About 96% or more of our businesses are small. And then we also have this unique branch or unique group that are never talked about. When we talk about small businesses and you go to the government and you say, what about our farms and ranches? They would say, no, we don't even think about them. We don't count them. We don't have anything to do with them. Uh, unless they're running some business on the side. Uh, my father-in-law ran a used John Deere combine parts business. So he would have a foot in both camps, or would have had a foot in both camps. But just for the sake, uh, some of us who do work with small businesses do look at, at some of our farms and ranches. We certainly, they are a business. They uh, operate like a business. They have unique uh, parts to them. But and some people use this under $100,000 in sales to indicate are they a small farm ranch operation. And in North Dakota, if we take a cut at that level, we have another 18,500 businesses, or about 59% of our uh, farms and ranches are small also. Well, what does that mean here in North Dakota? And here's a map showing by uh, county and we're always interested in how many and how much do they make. And this data is, is older, but it's I did it on purpose, picked this older data, because this is sort of before the oil boom. Uh, the oil boom would, would change this map entirely, but now we have the oil bust, and so it's probably going the other way. And so I just said, let's pick a more stable point in time, about 2008. And you can see that this is number of entrepreneurs and stuff. How many are there out there? And you can see counties uh, such as Cavalier, Towner, uh, Dunn, Logan with those green, they all have more than 26% or 26% or greater of their businesses would be considered small or entrepreneurial. And we'll talk about that uh, later on. And the US average is right around 21%. However, what we know about them is they don't make a lot of money. Uh, this is the average uh, entrepreneur, average income. Uh, and as you can see, by and large, our entire state, uh, our entrepreneurs make 23000 or our small businesses or less. And this is uh, on income that, that they're taking out of the business for themselves and stuff. Uh, U.S. average, about 28, so we're a little bit below uh, U.S. average. And I just want to take that historical look at, at what's going on. And like I said, uh, the last few years would have seen huge changes uh, uh, both ways. And today we're seeing you know, the disappearing of businesses as fast as we saw the upswing in businesses. Stop. What is a small business? You've probably been sitting there thinking, I don't understand. You know, what, what are we talking about? And this is one of the most difficult things uh, to think about is, is you know, defining it. And to be honest with you, 
Uh, there's a bunch of definitions, but the most common definition, sort of the street definition for small business, is less than 500 employees. Well, in North Dakota, you now see why we have such a majority of our businesses being small businesses, because we don't have a lot of businesses who are greater than 500 employees, you know, and you can probably take your 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 hand and start naming some of the ones the North Dakota government obviously uh, uh, right on top uh, the major universities would be there also you know so that's that's what they are and then another way that the Small Business Administration looks at small businesses is also are do they have a predominant are they predominant in their field it may not be number of employees but are they predominant and sometimes they look at them and how much do they uh, gross every year but the street and when we talk about it and when you hear it used in most contexts they're talking about this number of less than 500 employees so uh, you saw me on a couple slides just before this mention this word entrepreneurs well what's a small business owner and what's an entrepreneur and yes uh, 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 if any of you know Margaret Fitzgerald from on campus, uh, she and I have just finished a little sort of pilot study looking at can we define entrepreneurs and small business owners. Theoretically, there's lots of literature, a fair amount of literature written on that, but uh, we looked at four items, uh, innovation, planning, lifestyle, and risk, which are probably the four big items. Uh, and we said, yeah, we can define these two groups. Uh, and they do differ from each other. However, the literature, as you read it, they're going to switch back and forth all the time, especially uh, the, 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 the literature, the magazines, uh, newspapers, but even the academic literature. We don't use it consistently as you read some of the texts and, and everything. Uh, the question comes up, though, is as a small community, who are we interested in encouraging to come to ours? Are we interested in the small business owners or are we interested in developing entrepreneurs? Well, one of the big problems with it is that we don't know when businesses begin who's going to be the fast growth, the gazelle, as they're sometimes referenced, and who's going to be that slow grower. And so we don't know that. Uh, and we really... Businesses go through phases. Sometimes they're fast growth, sometimes they slow up. Life changes for them and stuff. The other thing we know, uh, what Margaret and I found out, is that businesses tend to, uh, the entrepreneurs, yeah, they grow fast, but during the last recession, they also collapsed or, or went down very quickly. So you got a very roller coaster look if you think about the the uh, uh, look that you would have, it was up and down, up and down. The small business owner was much more stable. They didn't go up so quickly, but they didn't drop off as quickly either and stuff. Their number of employees stayed more static. And so there's a reason uh, we would argue, and that's what the article that we ended up saying, is that if you're in community development or thinking about your small town that you live in, or big town, it makes no difference, you need a mix. You need some of both. The goal, obviously, from my world and, and this community development world, but from our community vitality effort, is part of our, our goal is to, we want to enhance the economic engine. I mean, that's a segment of it that I worked on. We want to create them, we want to attract them, retain them, help them grow, and then help them, whatever we can do, to achieve success. And we do that for these reasons. Their jobs. I mean, bottom line is uh, their jobs and their dollars. Uh, they're bringing money into our economy, our local economy, and they're bringing people. That's paying salaries. That means families uh, and everything that goes with it. Well, but part of that CSR is uh, one of the things that these businesses also do is they have corporate social responsibility. And we're going to talk about some of these in greater detail and that's going to be one we'll discuss in more detail. They also bring us products and services. Uh, products and services that 
we want to have uh, people tend to go to the big city because they want certain things and I'm surprised now as I drive North Dakota uh, the towns that have a little coffee shop I was up in Kandu the other week and and uh, just a really nice little coffee shop there that that's part of it that's quality of life uh, theater uh, coffee shops uh, you know, grocery stores. Uh, yesterday, I spent working on the Rural Grocery Initiative. Uh, there was a meeting of, of of us to try to decide what can we do in small towns to retain groceries. Uh, for many people, that's you, we may not think about it much, but groceries are important. And you know, so what can we do? We want to build communities that attract. That means quality of life issue. That means jobs, uh, and we want to be able to add value. Uh, to this entire thing. Here in North Dakota, 182,000 jobs are found in the small business world. That's 60% of the private workforce, or, uh, of the private workforce, and it is ni nearly 96% of all states employers are uh, part of this uh, uh, small business world and stuff. And again, back to why the community well, we like businesses in our community because every dollar spent there, a little bit sticks and a little bit stays around. Uh, money spent outside of the community, when you drive off, and, and I'm only using them because they're used all the time when you drive off to the Walmart. Uh, nothing, none of that comes back to the community if the Walmart is outside your community. If it is a chain or a franchise located within your community, uh, about 43 cents will stick around, the rest of it uh, moves off outside of your local economic uh, uh, area and if it's a local business so about 68 uh, percent or you know nearly 70 cents on the dollar will stick around and the money circulates uh, it pays salaries it buys supplies it buys maybe utilities if you have a local utility uh, people are going to eat in in you know buying groceries at, at the store so it sticks around and that's what we're trying to get and as you go down that list from totally outside the community to local that how many times it circulates just that number just goes up and up and up so the more local businesses do business with local businesses we can even enhance and drive that even further and by now you're all going yeah this is all economics well part of it we're going to get into some other parts of it that are not the purely economic view of it. And that's uh, CSR, uh, sometimes considered corporate res social responsibility, sometimes references community uh, social responsibility, and that's what are your businesses doing to help themselves and to help the community grow, build, uh, whatever. And there's three dimensions to it typically. Uh, the responsibility to consumers, employees, and shareholders, the environment, and the broader community. Uh, the one big issue with CSR that is continually uh, one of the biggest hurdles to overcome are business owners who get upset with what we call the free rider. Well, business X, you know, I'm I'm giving, I'm doing, I'm letting my employees off to do uh, cleanup projects, to do a work, you know, a work day project, and this business over here, uh, uh, Joe's business, he never does any of that, and yet he's getting the benefit. We're doing, you know, joint ads. We're putting billboards out in different places to come shop in 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 our community. He's not doing anything, and he's getting. Uh, some of that and so the enlightened self-interest model says we do this for the good of our business it is good to support our community beyond just being there and and hiring people and you know doing business in the community there is reason to do this yet the the big hurdle the big issue is this free rider and sometimes that will be the issue that will cause everything to uh, sometimes come crashing down as people just get tired of the free riders. So one of the things we can do as extension is if we hear people talking about this issue of free riders, uh, there is no answer to it. I mean, they will be there. They are there. Uh, 
Uh, it's just to help people recognize that the more you engage at time, we can slowly win those people over. I, I do believe, and we've seen it happen, uh, but it, it does take time. And But you'll never be at 100%. You'll never get everybody. CSR is measured by uh, the business commitment to community, the amount of personal leadership that these uh, business owners take in the community, their elected officials, they serve on boards, they serve on uh, uh, social welfare groups, they serve on your your JCs or your Chamber of Commerce, uh, whatever. They uh, have community collective actions. They get involved with uh, uh, whatever festivals you have. They, you know, uh, help the school system. They help the local library system. They may help build the local library. They donate material supplies, and also they support the other businesses. Uh, when a new business comes to town, they say, "Hey, what could I buy from?" from uh, these businesses that supports us. My first job, uh, I ran a nursing home, uh, and the board was very specific and very clear to me that that was my job. That last one was to the nursing home previously, had always done its business wherever it could get the best deal, and they said, do business local, see what you can do. So <clears throat> we did. Uh, I think we changed a lot of uh, minds over time. Uh, they saw the, the nursing home as a much more active in the community. We went to the chamber meetings, or I went to the chamber meetings, and we started to buy local. Uh, and also, though, when I paid the monthly bills, I just didn't stick it in an envelope. It was a small town. Uh, I walked up and down Main Street, and, and, and people called me the sidewalk inspector. I walked up and down and handed them the check and had a conversation with them. Uh, so they could see that we were active in the local community. To the business, it means all these things. Uh, obviously, goodwill is, is one of the biggies, uh, but it means the ability to attract new customers, new employees. Uh, make your customers your ambassadors, uh, and that's a biggie. And to the community, it means families, individuals coming in. It means morale of the community, quality of life. I, you know, I guess they do have it on the list. It means more volunteers, more ideas. Uh, it's just a win. And so extension, and I guess the, the, the people I work with in extension and here in North Dakota, all of us have this opportunity to bring uh, CSR to our community uh, from our businesses uh, by working in the area and stuff. So, uh, you know, when people say, well, what can I do? Uh, this is just part of it is tell the story. Now we talked about, you know, some of the other things it brings, products and services, and this is just a list of the different ways that, <coughs> excuse me, can it can serve our communities, uh, to help serve our communities. <coughs> Excuse me there, I turned off the mic so I could cough a couple times there. Uh, it doesn't build lakes, but it allows us to have the other things we not want when we go to the lake. Small businesses add value. Uh, more and more our local foods people are reaching out. They are small business owners <coughs> and looking at, you know, what can they do? I just had before we came on, it's a little uh, uh, home-based business here over in Mandan, and I just got their list of, uh, hey, we're having, a, you know, it's our weekly uh, time to shop here and they've got salad mix and spinach greens and lettuce <coughs> excuse me uh, and sourdough bread and that's a biggie for me but uh, so they add value to 
what we're producing here and it's taking away or changing the chain from shipping everything out and then bringing it back in a process form. Uh, I know a young woman up in the northern part of the state who even grinds her own wheat and so she takes it off her dad's farm, grinds her wheat and then bakes it up. So what's our role? And really that's what we're here to talk about most today is help with change. Uh, no, all business owners today face massive change. Um, help with change so that they recognize what's going on. Help with change to encourage them. Many of you have heard me talk about business owners need to be in the online world uh, to, to help them get there to let them know they are there because there's probably reviews about them online uh, so that's certainly certainly one thing is to help with the change process to help them through that uh, uh, over time we can be their ambassador uh, you know from me that I'm always pushing small businesses writing articles about them Whatever I can do, I'm going to be their ambassador. I'm going to market them. But I'm also going to tell them at times, you know, you can be uh, a really good ambassador by saying, uh, I was in your store today and, uh, you know, this just didn't look right or this doesn't work right or you may want to think about this ad you ran or, um, you know, ambassador doesn't always mean just shouting their, their good qualities, but also helping them on a one on one to say, here's something you might want to try. And when we're marketing, you know, just throw in the, the marketing, use all the tools. Uh, I try very carefully not to look like I'm giving, uh, 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 pushing one business or anything, but I'll certainly push an industry. And once in a while, I just need to talk about a specific business uh, uh, because of something I see. I use them as an example and stuff. Uh, uh, our Subaru dealer over in Mandan. Uh, recently, I did a blog post about them because this is such a such a cool idea. I walked in and here they have bikes sitting there, and I'm going, "What are you selling bikes now besides cars?" And they said, "No, these are for our customers. So when you come in, and maybe you don't want it to use your shuttle car, or they they sit right down to ride down to Mandan to the uh, Fort Abraham Lincoln. There's a trail." Hey, you want to go ride a bike? They've got helmets, they've got bikes. Take them out, give them a spin, and they'll work on your car. And I thought, oh, what a cool idea. Uh, and so it was something that, that they can do. But use all the tools. Uh, and I just list that we have the traditional, we have the online, and we have the you, which is the business owner, but also you as, as an extension educator, as extension specialist, can put yourself in that mix and uh, uh, think about helping them in all those ways. Uh, do reviews, you know, of your local businesses. Uh, uh, that's important. Uh, I don't know. Uh, a lot of people, when we travel now, that's how we decide where we're going to stop to eat, where we're going to stop to sleep, where we're going to go to buy something, who we're going to use as our plumber, who are we going to go, you know, who's our dentist. It's it's word of mouth, and but it's, it's online reviews. Uh, about 75% of people don't buy anything anymore today. Uh, that's now where they get these numbers. Once you get in the online world, it's all sort of iffy. But uh, uh, about 75% of people, they say, will go online and check check out what's being said about it uh, at various sites. Ignite the passion. Uh, help people. Uh, a lot of people have that idea. I want to do this. You know, that's just, I've always wanted to have my own business. I want to X. Uh, well, encourage them, uh, especially with our youth. Encourage them to think about being the entrepreneur. Uh, what could they do? And we have a lot of youth who start as, uh, 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 you know, the lemonade stand or something like that. Uh, if you see one, stop and... and uh, talk to them about that and buy that cup of lemonade and and I'm not always good about that myself but uh, uh, show give them role models you know do what do what we can here any questions I'm just rambling along here just uh, and of course we have our traditional role facilitate learning anytime any place from the traditional classroom uh, you know, get a, 
being up in front. Uh, most people, when that we I talk about you know teaching some uh, part of a small business, they a lot of people get quite nervous about that. The reality is, is you're all shoppers, you all buy, you know what you like, you know where you go, you know how you find it. Those are the things that are important to business owners, uh, as much as just getting them together and starting a conversation, which is where we excel. Is, is starting these these conversations amongst people uh, about things and then small business owners are like anybody else it probably will just take off on its own uh, but so when you get a chamber together don't just have them sit there and go through their old meeting and nobody you know talks to each other take 10 15 20 minutes and be a facilitator and give them some good leading questions to start a conversation about um, on that and then of course the online world uh, we're gonna need to be there for them uh, small business owners don't have a lot of time uh, they may have nobody else in their shop or they may have very few people so that they can get education so they're gonna turn to the online world uh, and they're gonna as, uh, put their their head in their hands and just sort of sigh sometimes and that is a picture of me uh, doing just about that uh, but you know we have to think about every you know anytime any place type learning uh, for them we also have to eliminate the myths and maybe that's you know I talked about some of the things we can do uh, the greatest question I get is this one on free money where is the free money it's died down some uh, I don't see it quite as much as I used to there is you know the, the, the bottom line answer is when people ask you where's that free money the best answer is is there isn't any now once in a while there is and if you heard, came in early you heard Molly and I talking she's uh, Molly Sobey's on she's gotten several grants probably others of you have gotten some grants yeah there is a little bit out there depending upon what you're doing and we can try to guide people to that uh, or send me an email and say hey where can I and you know we'll try to figure it out it might come at certain times of the year though but basically the easy correct 95 percent of the time is there is no free money uh, you know the government is not going to give you the money to start your business the part that goes with that is you need to tell them they need to have money of their own they're need to gonna have to put up some money and so if you don't have a good credit rating and you don't have some money in the bank though that's probably what you have to start at first uh, rather than just getting this free money get rich quick it doesn't happen quick uh, yeah there's always uh, uh, David is saying for inventors there are funds but uh, more so it's less expensive dollars low interest loans yeah uh, quite often it's a loan it's not a it's people want the free money and uh, uh, you know nothing they have to pay back and as Dave points out it's loans more often yeah we can get the interest rates down but uh, uh, yeah Dave wants free money too yeah don't we all uh, so get rich quick no doesn't happen uh, oh yeah there's a story here and there and you'll read these stories about yeah I work from home and I got you know uh, I make half a million dollars a year why would you sell that store that how to, how to do it if you really could do that on a consistent basis so you make it maybe one time and then you just sell the book and you forget about the rest of it uh, if you build it they will come that goes back to the marketing uh, people aren't going to find you uh, if you just build it uh, it's not like the field of dreams as us believe and stuff uh, the myth of you have to be born an entrepreneur no you do not or a small business owner uh, we can teach you entrepreneurship small business ownership it's all teachable uh, yeah you have traits that make it a little easier or a little harder or you're gonna have to overcome some things but anybody can successfully run a small business if they have the passion and if they want it and are willing to take the steps needed if people come to you with I have all this free time so I'm just gonna start a business suggest where they could donate their time uh, maybe the school needs some uh, volunteers maybe you need a you know a library needs it you know it, it's not 
not where you go spend your free time because what it's going to cost you is a lot of time and a lot of money and in the end you're going to have lost time and lost money if that's the only reason you're you're is behind you pushing you and it does not get easier one of two things happens to a business owner one their business is very successful or successful well that doesn't make it any easier because now you've got employees you've got more, probably more loans you may have to think about more space uh, you know growth uh, you may have to think about production lines expansion so that doesn't get any easier or the other side that's going to happen is you fail and that's not easy either because now you you feel bad it's depressing uh, and you got to sort of pick yourself up by the bootstraps and start all over again other potential roles and this is just a laundry list uh, one is you, you know we're doing it today just by awareness and promotion of this whole idea uh, go to your chamber I don't know if you attend chamber meetings but I would at time uh, show up at the chamber meeting and help people network and connect with each other uh, be a resource spot where they can get information or know where to go to get information uh, another great resource that you can be it could be a mentor you can just uh, if you don't have uh, the SBA coming to your town or the SBDCs uh, encourage them to stop by make you make your uh, town a regular spot where uh, these entrepreneurs small business owners can come in and get answers to their questions and stuff uh, if possible or at least know where to call them how to get in touch with them resources obviously the center uh, I mentioned Dave already. Dave Lehman is on the line. He's got his manufacturing extension. And Dave, why don't you put in your, your I forgot to put his, uh, you can get it through CCV uh, website, but Dave, stick your uh, manufacturing extension direct link in there for people to see. I apologize for that. Uh, these slides will go up on SlideShare. Uh, and then, as I said, I am recording this. Um, I've got a small business website. Uh, Julie Garden Robinson is this uh, very good uh, book or booklet, Starting Your Own Food Business in North Dakota. That's often uh, one of the things that people want to start their business around is food uh, because uh, we have the world's greatest, uh, you know, uh, jams, jellies, uh, mixes, what have you. Uh, Carrington Research Center has, has horticulture. Uh, Kathy up there uh, you know, has, has horticulture. Uh, the Extension Horticulture Specialists and other specialists uh, are all uh, there to help you. I always mention horticulture because a lot of people, the food business, uh, uh, gardening, those are big things that I see and, and right now we're starting a high tunnel project uh, those are those big plastic bubbles to extend season and stuff uh, and you heard me talk about this young couple that uh, has their ad out today for me uh, you know they're high tunnel so I had my first salad greens in March uh, this year early March and Dave's got his website up there, agndsu.edu slash manufacturing. So it's just that slash manufacturing. Other resources, obviously, in North Dakota, and this is just a partial list. Uh, uh, Dave could give you a lot more if you're into the manufacturing. And so if you are, if you've got somebody who wants to go into manufacturing or is an inventor, you know, uh, have them contact Dave. But Department of Ag, Farmers Market and Growers Association, Commerce, State Bank, Secretary of State, and it goes on. And then the Feds has USDA Rural Development and the Small Business Administration, and they have two two groups that have uh, their own uh, bodies there, SCORE and the Small Business Development Centers. <laughs> so it's small business, big impact. Uh, hopefully. Uh, today we've given you some uh, idea about the impact that these small business are and there is a reason why uh, we do need to support them we do need them if we want to have growing North Dakota we need growing small businesses we don't know who's going to be the next big uh, uh, Google we don't know who's going to be the next big manufacturing company uh, and Dave has got a, a 
Facebook site uh, for North Dakota Manufacturing News there, um, another site there. We don't know who's going to be that big company. What we need to do is we got to keep the funnel going and keep n new businesses coming along here and stuff. Yeah, the success rate is, is not the greatest. We'd love it to be higher, but that's just reality. Uh, and it's not when we say businesses, they don't fail necessarily. You hear all this you know, 80%, uh, 60% of businesses fail. No, they don't fail. A lot of time these business owners simply quit being a business. Uh, it's not as profitable as they want. They find another opportunity. Uh, they realize that this is not going to be the business or they need to take a step back. And so it's not a failure. Uh, they're, they learn something and they're maybe off to something else uh, that looks like a better alternative. So is there any well, oh, uh, the one thing I wanted to point out is that uh, this was a good segue this week uh, to have this today because uh, next week is uh, Small Business Week, National Small Business Week, uh, May 1st through the 7th. So I would encourage all of you, uh, the one takeaway you can do from this uh, uh, webinar is next week, uh, go up and down your main street and just say thanks to these little small business owners for, for who they are and what they're doing for your communities and stuff. And those who are not as much involved, encourage them to join the chamber, come to some of your meetings. And the, those who are heavily involved, just say thank you and that you appreciate what they're doing to help support community and community development and families in the state of North Dakota. So, any questions? Thank you, Linda. On the final report for the Bremer grant, yes, yes. That will, yes, it, will, it should help you. Glad to hear that. I just want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, go ahead um, oh this is Leisha I have kind of a question the one thing that kind of um, I was thinking about as you're talking about farms and local foods and that um, that kind of topic mm -hmm. and I don't know maybe this isn't an appropriate question for this group either but when I start thinking about this when you one thing that resonated with me is when you said that farmers kind of fall on that that crack between they're not really people don't really consider them small businesses but they are because they're run as such and you know kind of thinking about egg advocacy and really getting the word out about what agriculture is and what farmers do you know sometimes I think there is kind of a disconnect even between the local foods people and you know what we call what we think of our traditional farmers you know our corn and soybean wheat farmers versus our vegetable producers you, is there some way we can kind of connect <laughs> them together? That, you have your job. I mean, that is one of the <laughs> challenges that that we see across the nation is to bring these two group of farmers uh, together and to help realize that it's going to take both. People are not going to, you know, some people will never be local foods people. Some people will never be big ag people. Uh, just to accept and recognize who we are, it's, it, it, it is a huge challenge. Uh, I know of one big egg farmer, who I will say, who did take about 10 acres of his land, and he's allowing a, 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 long, a young local food producer to farm it simply because the way his land developed. I mean, it's not like he's. this is all good on his part. It is good, I mean, uh, but... It was so small that he couldn't turn around his big equipment. So he just said, you know, it's a little nook off one of his fields. And so he said, here, go do this. And and uh, we need more of that to have happen. We, we need more of that. And so you were right on, uh, Alicia, with, with, with we need to bring these two groups together because uh, they're both there. They both have a place. And we got a challenge in front of us. I don't know the answer, though. I'm working on it. You know, I'm, I guess I'm a. I grew up big ag, but now I've really been heavily into the local foods the last few years. But uh, it's tough. Our land. Uh, uh, my dad died, and so we're renting out the land, and and it's big ag. Yeah, because I think that was one kind of ironic thing that I think seems to be coming up is people don't <laughs> consider 
each other farmers, even though everyone, or that, you know, the big farmers aren't contributing to the food supply and yeah. I don't know, that kind of thing. But the other thing I kind of question I had too is with online businesses, are we, is Extension working with online businesses or um, when you're talking about these small businesses, are they mainly the brick and mortar types? They're, they're, uh, Extension as a whole, yes, there are some movements to work with the online businesses. Uh, I've done a few workshops uh, talking about getting online, being online uh, in one of the communities. Uh, and, and it's just a lot of businesses say we don't have to be there. Everybody knows us. Yeah, but you're forgetting people who are driving through or new people in or, or you look at the people and, and you may be one, uh, you're, you're younger, uh, do you even have a landline? Which means do you even get a phone book? Uh, people do not go to phone books anymore. Yeah, my wife does. But a lot of people just Google it. I mean, that's the way of the world and stuff. And so, But anyway, I went to this one town, and it said that this little restaurant, it gave me the directions to this little restaurant. And the problem was is I knew that restaurant was really the where the pin had marked it, you know, for the old Google map. Yeah, the pin was in the middle of the Chevy car dealer's lot. Uh, they were off by two blocks. Well, if, you, if I miss it by two blocks, it's only 30 miles to the next town. I'm not turning around to go back. You know, that might be the mindset of some people. So we need to think for all businesses, it no longer really is a question of do you have an online presence. Yes, you do. It's just what type of online presence do you have. And certainly if you're not going to do anything, at least read what people are saying about you on the review sites and be ready to respond. So I'll be glad to help anybody. There is work going on. Not a lot, but there is some. Thank you. You bet. Well, thank you, everybody, uh, for taking some time uh, on this Wednesday. And I hope you have a great rest of your week. And remember, next week is what? It's Small Business Week. Uh, David said, real businesses especially need to be online. Yeah. And, and But part of, part of it is in your community. One, one last encouragement is to get uh, fast Internet service. Anything we can do, and cell service. You know, those are things people are looking for. So with that, I'll just sign off and thank you again. And uh, once again, repeat, have a good day. Take care. Bye.